Welcome back to part two of our live training session here, working with a Honda K-Series engine and a Haltech Elite. In this tutorial, we're gonna finish off our base map creation process, dialing in all of our two-dimensional and three-dimensional tables so that we can successfully get our engine to fire up and run using our Elite. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Welcome back to our live training session here. We're going to be taking a look at finishing up our base map creation process in this tutorial. Now the last tutorial was really to go through and set up some of the basic background information and our sensor inputs. This is going to be taking a look at setting up our fuel and spark timing, cam control tables, uh, setting up any other outputs or any other various tables that have to be dealt with to get the engine to fire properly. Now recall, we're going to be calibrating and tuning this in an alpha end strategy. That means that we're going to be working with our throttle position as a load input to our fueling table. Um, we're going to be working with map pressure as the load input to our spark timing table in the traditional sense. I still have the map pressure sensor connected via a vacuum block to the intake manifold or throttle body assembly, I should say, is no intake manifold, but to the runner assembly to a vacuum block feeding the map sensor. So we're gonna have a reasonable map vacuum from the map sensor reading that we can utilize for spark timing correction. So we're not gonna do a full alpha N strategy here, although you can, there's not a huge benefit to switching over to full alpha N via spark timing, but throttle for load as the fueling input is imperative to get this calibrated right, as we're gonna find here as we go through the tutorial. So let's go in here and take a look at some of the other details that we need to configure. And then we're gonna be just going through table by table and setting up the rest of our base file for these individual throttle bodies. Now, this isn't gonna be specific uh, in terms of the setup and configuration for a K-series engine only. If you have B-series engine, if you have uh, any engine running individual throttle bodies, you can utilize the same strategies I'm outlining in this tutorial, uh, even for a V8 engine. Let's say you have LS engine with ITBs on it, same exact idea for calibrating and tuning. It's the same strategy, doesn't matter the engine, we're gonna have to go about calibrating and setting up our tables in a very specific manner here for alpha end style tuning. Let's jump in and take a look at a few things. We're gonna be going and skipping over engine configuration and sensors because we've touched on those heavily in that last tutorial. This is where we're gonna be just staying in our main page right here and going down to the rest of our drop downs here and all of the tables that we have to edit and calibrate along the way. So under fuel tuning, just real quickly here, under the tuning method, we have it set for VE-based tuning. So our main table is gonna be VE-based. It's gonna be air mass based. We have auto VE air temp compensation. This utilizes the air temp sensor correction for density in our air mass calculations right into the air mass calculation and not having a sub modifier table for air temperature. Uh, fuel type, we're gonna be setting this to flex fuel. We do have a flex fuel sensor installed. I'm not gonna be tuning this with ethanol, but I still wanna have that as just a, as a sensor input. Uh, we have that already wired into the vehicle here from our previous tutorial. We did do flex fuel tuning, so I'm just gonna make sure I include that. Now, uh, setting the fuel type for flex fuel does allow the compensation for fueling to be directly edited and uh, directly, I uh, should say, compensated for based on the ethanol constant changing. So if I did throw ethanol in the fuel system, it would be able to compensate for that without me needing to go back and retune everything. So that is definitely an advantage for uh, going and having uh, selecting flex fuel, but you do need a flex fuel sensor in order to select this option. Now, fuel load type we set to throttle position sensor, and that's where we get the alpha end strategy for our fueling and airflow model. Uh, fuel pressure input type, we're gonna find it's constant fuel pressure, base fuel pressure we're setting to 43 and a half. Um, again, some of these other options here are fine to be toggled on. Let's go into our drop down menu and take a look at something like our target lambda. Now the target lambda table is where we specify where we wanna have our target air fuel or target lambda. Now this is gonna be playing a role in our fueling calculations and our airflow model because we have fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. And the target air fuel comes from our target air fuel table here. So looking at this real quickly, uh, we have engine speed on the left axis and the top axis is manifold pressure. Now we wanna have this based on throttle position, but we wanna go and configure this based on fuel load as our break point input, not manifold pressure, because that's what we select it right here under, in this case, fuel load type, throttle position. We wanna find that same thing here for the input to our table, not manifold pressure. So if we go here to reconfigure and we go to manifold pressure and go to select, and I just type in here fuel, we should find fuel load and we might have to do fuel dash load. Let's see if that comes up with anything. Let's try fuel load. It should have as an input looking in here and just probably have to pick through all the sensors here. Fuel dash load. So it just it needed a space between the dash. So fuel dash load calibration, F load. And in this case, we're gonna go to our wizard and we're gonna start our increment at zero and going 100% throttle and the axis increment. Let's go 10% increments. 
and that's gonna give us a throttle movement between zero to 100%, and that's our range of movement. Now we do reconfigure this so that it's gonna have reasonable air fuel targets when we're working with this alpha end strategy via throttle position. So when I'm at, let's say, 80 to 100% throttle, I'm gonna target something like 12.6 air fuel. At when I'm at something like zero to 20 or 30%, I'll go and keep my existing target air fuels of what we're finding here. Now between 30 and 80, we can go in here and use the H option. And that's gonna horizontally interpolate between these two. So we're gonna find as I start to give it more throttle, we're gonna be richening up our mixture as the engine's gonna be seeing higher, higher load. One thing to keep in mind with individual throttle bodies is that there is definitely going to be a completely unlinear relationship between map pressure and throttle position. Meaning I could be at 50% throttle and be at 100 kPa or atmospheric pressure, or even 40% throttle and be at 100 kPa. So we definitely wanna richen it up because we're gonna be seeing atmospheric pressure very, very easily with the throttle bodies as we'll find that if we're dealing with a plenum style intake manifold, you're gonna have a more linear relationship between MAP and TPS. And that's why we can use MAP pressure as the load input for our traditional plenum style intake manifold tuning because the MAP and TPS are relatively linear to each other. Alpha N, they're very highly unlinear and therefore we'll find that we have to go and configure our table inputs for something like our target air fuel for throttle position or in this case, fuel load. So we have this configured and set up this should work out fairly well. Just be on the safe side, I'm gonna set this all to 14 air. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.